I believed. I really, fully believed. I knelt in tall grass and spoke with my God. I climbed the mountains to be nearer to my God. I went under the river to be made new by my God. In loss, I cried out to him for strength. In fear, I called out to him as father. In everything, I gave thanks to him as creator. I knew his word, studied it, wrestled with it, and cherished it. My faith was my greatest strength, my only solid ground on which I built my foundation. 30 years of a life placed upon his altar, the friends I chose, the wife I married, and the son I dedicated to him. I defended him, I gave to him, I evangelized for him, I sacrificed for him. When others fell away, I swore, not me, not ever, how could they be so foolish? When others doubted, I thanked God for the strength of my conviction. When others said it could not be, I smiled and thanked God that it was that he was. I believed. I really, fully believed. Many people view the unbeliever as one who never knew, one who never wept in the presence of their God, one naive of the power and the glory, one angry and resentful that life hadn't gone their way. But this is not me. I rejoiced in my suffering because I believed what the scriptures said. I knew my God and felt his love. I was not my own, I was the Lord's. I think it is important to know that people like me exist. Many believers will still say I never really believed, or that I hardened my own heart, or that I just wanted to be handed over to my sin. But where were they when I was on my knees crying and begging God to reveal himself? Where were they during my years of torment as I slowly came to realize the eventuality of the truth? Where were they the first time I admitted to myself that there could be no heaven, and thus that someday I would have to say goodbye to my kids forever? Where were they when a thousand more thoughts, just the same, broke me? I would have done anything to hold on to my faith, to not lose the closeness of a personal God, to not harm the relationships with every single person in my life, to still have an answer for all this existential dread. I would never wish this on anyone, but truth is truth. It was the idea of God is truth that led me to follow him with as much faith as I did, but it was also this determination for truth that took me away. For truth means nothing if we are not willing to follow it wherever it may lead. And despite my best hopes and deepest fears, truth pointed away from everything I had previously believed. I can still remember the last beautiful thought I had about God. I was reading to my son during his bedtime routine. We were in our first home, up the winding stairs to his room on the right, the hardwood squeaking as we rocked back and forth. We sat together in the green chair in the corner. He was almost two, and as he sat so close to me, his tiny breaths hitting the palms of my hands, we opened a book and began to read about walking with God. I read to him the pages that spoke of God as protector, as friend, as father. I showed him the pictures of the little boy holding Jesus' hand, and I began to cry. I could not believe this blessing. Surely only a loving God could have given me such a good gift. I kissed my boy's head, and I cried even more as I thought about the sweetness of my son learning to love the God that I did. I took so much hope and relief in the idea of God always being there for him always watching out for him when I could not, and always ready and able to step in should I ever fail him as a father. I've never felt comfort like that since. For that was the last time I was without doubt. That was the last time I felt my son was in loving arms beside my own. That was the last time I could give up my burdens to a higher, better power. That was the last beautiful thought I had about God. Now I am alone, fully responsible for my life living and working and loving and parenting and learning and growing without a guidebook, without a personal relationship with a perfect being, without a scapegoat, without eternity. There is freedom here. There is beauty here. Most importantly, the truth is here and I am living in it. But the truth is a hard and harsh place to live in. The reality of what we don't know, the loss that is permanent, the suffering that is unjustified, it's no wonder gods were invented and religion was accepted. For to live without these things, to give up these fairy tales, is to accept reality. 
to become finite and to live with the knowledge that one day everything we've ever known will simply end.